start recording. All right. So <clears throat> now these, now when you're making your underwater city, you don't have to uh, use this isometric board that I made. That's okay. Underwater scenes vary. You know, you, maybe you don't want to, uh, to have a black background and the board there, you want the whole ground to be there. So it's perfectly okay if you want to use uh, a different a different format or a different uh, technique. But this is just how I do underwater scenes and I'm doing it on an isometric board because it's just quicker and I don't want to keep you all here for like eight hours. So a very small isometric board, we can quickly just populate that and put on the terrain, populate it with buildings, and then we apply the filter, the water parts, and that'll be near the end. So first, if you do have, uh, if you have this up on your own incarnate screen, then feel free to follow along with this. If not, just divine in through with the, uh, the techniques on how to do it. First, I'm gonna explain what the template is so you understand it. This uh, very top part of this isometric um, platform is in the FG layer, that's the foreground layer, and then everything else is the BG layer. So if I was to turn on this, you know, you're gonna see that, well, hold on a second, that's not what I wanted to do. Let me get to the paintbrush, my mistake. So if I was to go to BG like this and go across, you'll notice that the, the sides are BG and the background, but not this top part. And the reason why that is, is for obvious reasons. I want to paint this, one second, one second, FG. I want to paint this uh, separately. So let's say that I'm trying to add on like a coral texture or whatever texture I'm using. I don't want it accidentally to bleed off onto the BG layer. So that's why I've changed that. So just this top part FG, everything else BG. So that way you understand the layout of that. And as always, the first step whenever you're making a scene is of course to make the landscape. So our first goal will be to try to create maybe a series of underwater mountain ridges. And um, it's the same principles, at least the way I do it, as uh, mountains that are on land. Obviously the mechanics are might be a bit, bit different in reality, but if you understand the basics about putting a mountain down on land, then this, this won't be too difficult to make mountains underwater, okay? So you just jump to your catalog, open up. Let me turn off my custom assets. And I'm just going to use the mountain large, and I'm going to make sure, hold on a second, that they're on. A, remember what layer they're on. I'm going to place one. You can look in that right panel. These are on layer one. That's fine. And I like to make sure that whatever I'm putting on the base of the board is going to be at a lower level because I want room to stack things on top of it. If I put this at layer five, then it's going to be problematic if I want to start placing buildings, plants all that stuff on top of that. So it's always best to make sure that this is at layer zero or below. Um, you can go to the lowest layer if you want because nothing will really be under, underneath it except for a grid or a texture. So let's just scale it up to where we want it. And we're gonna to wanna to think about a general layout. What are we making? Do we wanna make a <clears throat> like an underwater temple that's kind of been broken open? Do we wanna create like maybe a tower that starts at the bottom of the ocean floor and then goes all the way up to the surface. I mean, what suggestions would, would you suggest? Nothing too crazy. Keep it try to simple. And by simple, I mean pick one point of interest and then we can put little details around it. So a tower, a temple. Uh, if you have other suggestions, let me know. Obviously, a whole city is probably not going to happen. But feel free to point out in uh, stream chat. Underwater Temple says Panda Labs. Tower says King Clown. Uh, well, does anyone else want to weigh in on that? I'm fine with both. I like the idea of a tower, and I like the idea of an underwater temple, or maybe both. Maybe an underwater temple with a tower that goes up to the surface. Maybe a little bit of both. I don't see why not. Let's let's do that. I think. Okay. See a temple with tower on the side? Both. Yeah, that's what I'd say. Yeah, don't be shy. If you have something, please let me know. Okay, so we're going to do tower plus a temple. And I'm going to first try to figure out a general layout that I want. It would be cool to create a mountain range that looks like a crest. And then the temple will be nestled nicely in between, in with the negative space of the crest. And then we can put a tower on probably the tallest mountain peak. So that way it's not so ridiculously unbelievable how tall 
the tower will be. And you could also say that it's near the shore, so it's maybe only a couple hundred feet or several hundred meters from the surface, so it's okay. Let's see. Okay, first we're going to make that crest. And you're not going to worry about change doing anything underwater part. That means textures and all that stuff until later. First, just start with the general landscape bit. And I'm going to do that by just scrolling through. You can click the Alt or Command key, mouse scroll wheel. And you're going to go through the ones that look well, that look good. I said I'm making a crest. So you'll see that right here, this mountain ridge, the apex or the top part where the ridges meet, this nice ridge will kind of create that nice arc that I'm looking for. And it's also kind of just a pro tip and art in general that curves generally look good. Okay, when you're making a curve, it's pleasing to the eye. It can connect to something else like your focal point and it can kind of encapsulate things. So curves are really, really, really kind of an eye catcher. It's kind of a secret in the art world. The curve that I'm trying to make is like this, like that. And in here, this part right here is going to be where our temple is. And we're probably going to have the temple go around there and then we can create an entrance that's going in and then maybe climbs up to the tallest peak. And then the tower will go up and we'll show it underwater and then up about here somewhere we can probably start putting the tower looking like it's over the water. Now, so that's the general layout that I'm thinking of. But just the walk away from this is remember curves are very, very appealing to the human eye. And I absolutely recommend putting them into your maps. And that's difficult to do, of course, whether it's a mountain range, uh, the way you have some buildings uh, flowing together, uh, trees, like there are a lot of things that you can do with curves. So be creative. I'm gonna go ahead and delete all these paths. As you know, I have an addiction for drawing my layouts with paths first so that I don't goof it up. Having a general outline helps. Um, and that way it's easier not to give up because if you're just starting from scratch without any idea in your head, it's really easy to get dis discouraged and be like, well, I don't know what the F I'm doing here. Well, that little general little sketch layout is a guide and it helps you to stay, to stay focused and to not get discouraged if things don't turn out uh, because you're just going straight through scratch. You haven't thought anything in advance. So it's always important to think just just a teeny, eensy, beensy, beensy bit in advance. Not too much because there are limitations in the tool. Obviously, if you're making something and you want this outrageous image that you would expect to be made in Photoshop, uh, then, you know, go to Photoshop. Because Incarnate does have limitations with the tool, like all tools. So try not to go too overboard about what you're looking for, because then you might get discouraged because, oh, it doesn't look the way that I, that I want it to. Well, it might not be possible with uh, with the tool. So try to think ahead first and that makes it a little bit easier. So I can piece these together. I'm going to maybe create a section where there's like a little ridge right here. Maybe we can have some underwater vessels going through that ridge. We can put the tower maybe here and then maybe another tower with a bridge going across. And then underneath that bridge you have submersibles or something moving around. So we'll have to create our own submarines and that will be fun <laughs> because there are no submersibles <laughs> it right now, but that'd be sweet, right? So let's keep uh, creating that ring that we want. I'm scrolling through the various mountains and I'm just going to try to line up things as I see it. Let's see that. We could maybe even consider taking this one, copy, paste, and maybe flip it. I'm not sure if that would work. Yeah, maybe make it a little bit smaller because I don't want these two to be the exact same size. Otherwise, there's a sense of symmetry there. You'll, you'll kind of see the symmetry there. But if you just drop the size of it just a little bit like this, then it doesn't necessarily have that same symmetry. Or you can put another um, stamp in front to kind of break up the last bit so it doesn't have that weird symmetry to it. So if you want, you can put some stamp right here like this, and that will break up that, that symmetry. And I'm also going to select all of these. And I don't want to make sure that none of the line work or texturing bleeds off of the board okay you see how there's some bleeding off to the board don't do that center it in a way where it's going to be where all that line work is staying on the top of the isometric board <clears throat> now when you select everything you can also change the transform so when you have a bunch selected you can transform like this or you can transform like this just know that the more that you skew, the more that you try to change or transform something, the more awkward it's going to look. Just a quick example. So if I place this stamp here, 
like this and I try to make it look like a really tall mountain, you are skewing quite a bit of it. And that can work for you and sometimes it doesn't. Just be careful, like it depends what the stamps are. So always be mindful how far you're gonna go with skewing or transforming a stamp so it doesn't look too crazy or ridiculous. Okay, yes, absolutely, I agree. Okay. So we have our mountain range here, so far so good. And like with most other ranges, maybe I wanna put in some smaller hills or something. So I can go small mountains or put in hills if you want. It's underwater, so I'm not so sure if foothills work the same. You could try doing your dunes, might work fairly good as well. Maybe let's try dunes. And I'm also going to change uh, the HSBC for these as well. So let me just select one. Right now they're kind of yellow and that doesn't work for me. So we'll go over to filters. We'll go to hue. We're gonna try to find kind of the closest thing that we can, like maybe a red would work well and you can drop the contrast down, maybe drop the brightness down a little bit and then we can increase the contrast. So let me do that real quick and just see how it looks first. And it's okay if it doesn't turn out okay because there are tons of other tricks that you can do. Let's maybe set up a a texture for the ground. Let's just do that. Let's look at what options we have and pick one. Let's see here. Uh, I think this parchment brown dark might look okay. Make sure it's set to the FG one key, two key for BG. Drop softness down, just go across like this. And for now, this brown will work just fine. And then you can just go ahead and take the stamp, select, or I'm not select, but uh, let me see over here, sorry left panel, click luminosity, and then you can drop the brightness down like this. And this might not look good and that's okay because we're still gonna do all kinds of other things too to make it look more underwater. But for right now, just so it's kind of pleasing to the eye, we don't have this standing out bright yellow against this brown, the underwater part comes a little bit later. So let's just add in a couple dunes and see if maybe these might work okay, I'm not so sure. What we could consider doing also is putting in our structure so that we can maybe mold the landscape a little bit around it. I think there are a couple ruins. Let me type in ruin. Yeah, there's a couple here. There's this desert ruin right here. This could work and there's a whole bunch of other ruins together and we can maybe piece ruins together to make a larger one as well. Now, I'm gonna take a guess that this underground one is gonna be kind of dilapidated and falling apart. So <clears throat> I'm not gonna try to create a full on, like fully functioning temple. It's a really old temple. It's dilapidated as you would expect from things underwater. Salt is incredibly corrosive and <laughs> it doesn't really help. <laughs> doesn't really help. So let's put in a couple first. We'll see where, how it goes. I know some of these are a different angle. Let me put a piece, a couple together like this. And let me just create the main body first. And then from there, we can put a series of cliffs to kind of create a series of ridges because I've seen what a lot of underwater pictures look like. And there's clearly plate tectonics going on. Uh, I think it's called conduction. I can't remember the term where the plates slide over each other. And this causes mountains to go up. It includes underwater. Um, and then there's also uh, hot magma, which comes out of the earth and... Um, obviously hardens as it comes with cool water like underwater it's going to cool real quickly and obviously this process is extremely violent because when oxygen comes into contact with a heck of a lot of pressure uh, it that hot and that cool water becomes steam and it's very explosive and you kind of create these really interesting underwater kind of scenes let me try to fix that i didn't mean to delete that let me just hug it up against here like this, and then we'll create some ridges maybe. First, we'll go check out cliffs. And sometimes in a scene, you don't always have to make the landscape first. Sometimes you want to place a human or a man-made or a not nat or non-natural structure. So that way that you can kind of better mold how you want the landscape to be. Because sometimes I'll be making a landscape and it didn't turn out kind of the way I hoped as soon as I put down the structure and I got kind of frustrated. So I added the main body of the structure first and then I can start kind of working around it with stamps. So it's not always the best to 
to just um, do landscape first and totally forget about uh, uh, where the structures are because they are working kind of together. Let me just go through some stamps and see what options we have. I'm going to create a series of ridges that kind of connect uh, with the, the line work of the mountains. So whenever I put cliffs down anywhere, especially up with my mountains, is I try to line up the line work so that that way it kind of creates this continuity. So like I've connected this stamp up here at the top with that line of the mountain like this. And then I want to do the same thing everywhere. Find the stamp that works best, set it up, and put it on it. So let me go over a couple first. Let me see where is the one I was thinking of. This one right here should do good. I think, no, this one. Like this. And then we'll come in and use some other stamps as well. Let's see here. We can put one right here. And we're going to go through all our options. This part is a little time consuming, but you know, it's worth it to kind of create the scene that you want. You know, scenes are not, uh, and from my experience with, with DMing, GMing is that scenes are kind of more like setting the mood for your campaign. If you're doing it for D and D, if you're doing it just for art, that's okay too. Nothing wrong with that. I use the tool quite often for just art. Um, but for your like a D and D campaign, usually I make scenes as just kind of a to set a scene for like a campaign, to set a scene for a place. It's kind of a nice visual guide for your players. And also uh, if you're not interested in just theater of mind and there's nothing wrong with theater of mind, uh, if you prefer that, you know, don't worry about making scenes, it's okay. But sometimes, you know, you want to, you know, set an interesting scene in your campaign. And one of the ways to do that is pretty simple. What? Why can I not select this? Oopsie. That looks like an error of some kind. Whoopsie. What happened here? Uh-oh. Weird. I'm going to have to save real quick. One moment. That's okay, DN Key Donuts, if you can't stay for too long. Yeah, good idea. I'm going to save first, and then I'm going to refresh. Great idea. Thank you, King. All right. Let's see what's going on here. The good old refresh technique. <laughs> ah, just one of the downsides of a web tool. Okay, let's give a second to save and I'll refresh the page. It's been happening to you too, King. Oh, that's unfortunate. Okay, just be patient with me one moment while I try to get this thing loaded. What is happening here? Okay, well, that's clearly not working. <laughs> All right, one moment while I put it together here. Sorry about that. We'll have to talk with the developers about that and see what exactly is kind of going on with that. Okay. So also, I just want to mention that with these techniques, um, the technique that I'm going to be using to make water and make things look underwater, you can apply that to any kind of map. That includes all the styles that we have. So, you know, I'm just really kind of giving you the techniques. You don't have to do the isometric grid stuff, like I said in the minute beginning. Uh, let's. So where was I? I was talking about scenes and, you know, again, just the theater of mind thing. If you uh, prefer uh, to with the visuals over theater of mind. It's all a matter of personal preference. So I also like to create like kind of plateau rocks with the cliffs as well. And I'll show you how I make these. These are pretty classic. I make these all the freaking time. Um, but all I do is just kind of piece together the back part of a cliff and the front part of a cliff, connect the line work. And I might have to rotate just a little bit like this and then just group these together. group them, just press G key, and then you have this nice little kind of plateau rock and you can put whatever you want on it, maybe a central part of your temple, like a pillar or something that's holding all these kind of ruined pieces together. And I generally try to place it in a way where the line work along an edge like this, oopsie, let's do this one instead. The line work along the ledge also lines up with the line work around 
that edge. So I look for things that kind of match and go well together because you're kind of creating this idea of this plateau rock, maybe the rock that connected it to these cliffs eroded away. Limestone, for instance, is whittled away much quicker than, let's say, granite. So like the minerals that kind of broke away and the plateau rocks have a way of kind of like showing that kind of erosion and it looks more natural when I when I do it. So I like that. So you can also co copy paste, change the size, put them wherever you want. And I do that quite often. So I'll just put one maybe right here, copy, paste, and just click and open it, select both and then flip like this. And then you have basically another version of it. So you might have to rotate things a little bit. That's just the way it is when it comes to flipping and rotating things. Let me bring this down and put maybe a smaller one right here or over here. Let me see, I think over here looks okay. Like that. So now you have some nice plateau rocks that gives nice locations to put uh, structures and yet it still has a natural feel to it. Let's move it over to here. There we go, that looks good. And then that way you can maybe place, uh, you know, one of your ruin stamps on top of here like this if you want, another one on top of here, or somewhere else, it's up to you. Like this, let me move it over, go like this. You can even create a bridge that goes across. There's lots and lots and lots of options. Hey, hey Laura, welcome, glad you are here. Awesome. So whatever way you wanna do, I might not go with uh, these ruins, it might be more fun to create you know, an actual civilization of some kind, maybe a village or a submarine port. I thought maybe ruins would be good ruin, but actually now I'm thinking it might be more fun if it's if it's an active kind of place and hasn't been lost to uh, to time. Maybe that will be more fun. If you have any arguments with that, just slap my hand in this in voice chat or in stream chat one. Just like naughty, naughty, bad. Why'd you do that? Stay on course. Okay, saving might go slow. Okay, sweet. Yeah, I'm I'm kind of digging this so far. It looks good. Um, one other thing that I like to do is sometimes you don't want to have that same flatness on top of your <clears throat> on top of your um, your plateau rock. So throwing in an extra stamp like this and lining up the line work kind of gives it another sense of depth so there's another section there you can climb on you can do the same thing you can do it anywhere put one here here there's a lot of different ways to go about it but just putting on an extra stamp kind of creates this extra sense of height and everyone's trying to figure out how to do height in fantasy regional style because sometimes it's hard to kind of convey that depth and it can be confusing and difficult to work with cliffs and the secret like i said to cliffs is just Com uh, making sure that you line up the line work and that way it looks consistent. There's not any gaps. There's a nice smooth ridge line and it looks good. So that's really kind of the way that I go about it. Let's keep going over. I want to create more ridges, kind of something I would expect in an underwater scene. And we can kind of create even more depth by saying put in more stamps here. And then we'll put in one right here as well. Connect this, there we go. Getting more and more depth and I like that, that's good. Let's see here, maybe we can create one over here. Uh, yeah, well, that might not work, I'm not sure. Let's maybe move it over to here. And let's try connecting it with the line work. So connect it with this one right here like this. So that looks like a piece of a mountain right there, nice. Setting up. See, it's all the secret is. It's just doing the line work. That's all that it is. It's not nearly as complicated as you think. Let's say you want to put in another piece of line work right here. Or it kind of doesn't go well. Not sure. Let me bring it down more. Test it out. Uh, no, don't think that's going to work. You can maybe try elsewhere just to see. Make it smaller. Go right here maybe. Yeah, let's add one more, maybe a smaller one, so it looks like it's kind of turning into a small ridge. There we go, like that. And maybe we can do the same thing with this one, like this. Okay, I think that looks okay so far. So we're kind of creating different levels here where we can start putting things here on these islands here. Let's copy and paste one of these, copy, paste, make it a little bit bigger, and maybe we can put it... Uh, up against one of these ledges here might look good, like right here. Let me take a look. Mm, 
bomb here, here, a lot of options. Hard to pick what you want. Hmm. Tough one. I kind of want to put at least one more in here. Not sure. Well, I won't worry about it for now. Don't want to take up too much time. Just gonna check chat. Would like ruin type area. Man, that sounds like a great idea. <laughs> yeah, maybe this lower section right here can be the ruin. And often I like to, you know, sometimes label areas so I know where everything is. You can put like maybe the tower will go right here. Let's see, I think that text. Let's go tower. One second, tower can go right here, and then we can put a bridge across here, and then another smaller tower right here, and then I'm trying to think what other things that we can add in here. This tower is going to be going all the way up to the top. This one will just be like a half tower with a bridge that goes across, and then uh, maybe we can put some structures on top of these peaks. It's always nice to put a little structure on top of the peak, just like in above the surface um, you know it looks it looks nice because there's continuity with the line work and you know I water is a bit different than land when you're considering like defenses and stuff in the water like it doesn't really matter if you have like difficult landscape because you can swim so if you're thinking about defenses you're going to be thinking about entirely different things so I'm not going to even worry about that kind of stuff maybe there's like a tower with like an orb on it that shoots like I don't know some kind of like uh, sonic, like sonic and like a watt sound or cause sound travels faster underwater. So maybe some kind of sound weapon we can mount on one of the towers to blow up enemy ships. You know, I think that'd be, that'd be kind of cool, right? Cause everything is underwater. This whole thing's underwater. This is not the top. This is not the surface at all, but we will be putting stuff above the surface once we get water set up. Yeah, well, I'm not going to make it a big city because that's going to take forever. So it will probably just be like maybe the district of a city. See, it is in an isometric format, so it's already kind of primed for that. So you could just say that this is like one section, one section of the underwater city where uh, uh, the submarines go and they do through customs checks. And you've got that nice tower with that sonic weapon and that blows up ships, which I'm really excited to, to make. I'm thinking maybe we should have that sonic weapon like firing at a ship somewhere and it blows it up <laughs> that'd be cool even though there are no explosions underwater i guess in that way without oxygen but <laughs> i guess we'll see we'll, we'll have fun with it so we'll have that bridge and we'll put some spots too where i want to put some stuff like a structure here here uh let's start adding in our structures right now so let's go ahead and put in a tower so the first tower is going to go all the way to the top. And if you use kind of like these kind of towers like this, where they're not really, it's not really can be stacked on top of each other, it might not look right. So you might have to go with a tower that maybe might be a little bit more, I guess, modular, I, I guess would be a good way to put it. Let me look at the tower option. So this stone tower right here, like you can stack these on top of each other. And I, I do realize that there is baked in shadows and we, we will address that, of course. But, you know, this might work fairly well right here like this. Just stack these towers on top of each other. Like this. And we will address that uh, that shadow right there. Not quite yet, but let's just maybe build the tower as it goes up like this. And then if you want, you can add maybe a different tower at the top because this is just maybe, maybe the foundation part of the tower. This is just the structure, structural part. And if you find yourself running out of room for groups, like right here, this is at layer four, I only have room for one more uh, stamp on top of that, right? So the way to fix that, to give yourself more layers is just group it. And now it's at layer two, that whole construction is at layer two. And now you still have three, four, and five other layers to put on top of that tower. So it's kind of a neat little pro pro tip that if you group things it will put everything on that layer and that way you have room to put more things on top okay i hope that helps yeah i like the sonic weapon idea too boom <laughs> so <clears throat> yeah this is at layer two and we can put more things on top of it whether it's that same kind of stamp that we want to put on top see if you put layer two layer three on top i'm going to make it extra long extra tall and then maybe we can put something else 
on top of it like an elven tower, maybe change the color of it. Uh, let's see how it stacks on top first to see what it looks like. And since we've got all this gray here, maybe we can just take the filter and drop the saturation and then drop that brightness down. And then we can maybe do the same with these towers. So just drop the saturation down and same thing with this one drop the saturation all the way down. And now maybe these will kind of <clears throat> blend in better. So you have that top tower. We can even add one more. I'm not sure how tall the water will be. We'll go over that and check. I think that should be tall enough. That's quite tall as those mountains would be ridiculously tall, completely unrealistic structure, but <laughs> you get the idea. And again, if you feel like you're running out of layers, just group the whole thing you're it's on layer two again and now you have room to put light stamps or whatever it is that you want to put on there okay yeah this thing is a huge tower and that's okay because this is fantasy um you know i don't know if you guys have seen like lord of the rings but you have those huge 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 statues of you know the kings of numenor as you know frodo and the group are going through this area i forgot the name of it but you know it's totally ridiculous that these statues are that massive there's no way that <laughs> you could make those but adding a fantasy element is really nice so maybe making something out of proportion making it really big uh, sometimes that is really helpful like focusing on the reality part can make your map less fantasy and then you kind of rob yourself of interesting elements that might draw people to your map. So adding some fantastical element to the more realistic elements of your map makes it pop out even more. This tower is massive, right? And it it's not obviously not realistic, but it makes it fantastical. It makes it, you know, interesting and unique and it pops out, right? And that's a good thing. You want you want to do that. Okay. So now we've added that main tower there and I'm just going to name it that too. I just try to remember to to label your your groups uh, because as the more groups that you have uh, the harder it is to, to be able to find which group you're looking for so kind of just labeling them kind of helps so i'm also going to name this one uh, plateau rocks or p rocks because i don't want to embarrass myself and show how i don't know how to spell plateau properly even though i probably do know how to spell it but why why risk it right Okay, I think most of my groups have been labeled lines, tall tower. Yep, that's good. So the next part is to kind of create that bridge that goes across on top of another tower right here. I don't see any reason why we can't just use the same kind of stamp that we used right here and just put it on top like this. Or you can uh, go with the straightaway view if you want, if you want to change the angle. So it's more interesting. So if you go straight away like this, let's make sure that it's down a layer as well. So layer two, copy paste, put it up top like that. And nicely, the background's black right here. And that's really useful because the shadow from the regional style, the baked in shadows will disappear. So you only have to deal with the shadow on this FG layer. And there's a whole bunch of tricks to deal with that. And there is no one catch all trick, unfortunately, for removing. Uh, fantasy regional shadows or kind of hiding them because uh, every map that you make with regional might be different and the scenario is different so you'll have to come up with a different method each time <laughs> we know you can't spell plateau <laughs> i can actually but it, it sounded funny <laughs> so now i'm going to add a bridge i know someone's going to respond likely story mate <laughs> Um, so the next part is to kind of like maybe choose like a bridge that might work well. This one right here doesn't look very good. We can look at other options. Let me expand all and kind of just look at the options that we have. Some might not work better than others. There's this kind of Eastern bridge right here that I kind of like. It has that built in shadow, unfortunately, maybe let me lift it up like this. Let me go bring it forward one. So it's in front like this, and then I'll put this one in front of this. So let's go like that. And I'm also going to drop 
uh, the saturation on this one as well. So it's just all gray. And then we can deal with color with light sources and filters later. If it's gray, then um, you know, just adding a light source on top of it. I'm just using the gray so that they all kind of mesh together because obviously these are totally different colors from each other. And so they might not look well. And so I just drop the saturation for now so that they all match together and then deal with color a little bit later. That strategy might not work for you. I know there are masters of the fantasy regional style like Brian Marshall, who doesn't do any of that stuff. Amazingly enough, it's just he's able to use all the various colors from the stamps and they just look freaking incredible. And I, I don't know how they do it. it it's, it's godly. I can't explain it. It's beyond my mortal understanding. Okay, and we can go with a different wall tower top too. And again, just make sure to drop, change the saturation. Oopsie, this one needs to go down, it's way above. Put that on top and we'll drop that saturation. There we go. So this is like the first step and it, it does look a little, does look a little hot. This, I don't want it to be so high to where, I'll just do here, because I don't want this to be too high in comparison to this one. Honestly, I'd rather this one be really short and this one be way up because the water level is probably going to be somewhere like right here, somewhere around there. This is already so close, so close to the surface, unfortunately. So I might even have to bring this down even more, like maybe bring it down to there. In fact, I'm just going to delete this one and just put this one right here instead. Like that. And I'm also going to move it in. There we go. Now it's not nearly as close to the surface. I kind of want it to be even higher than that, but in fact, I think we're gonna do that. We'll go up one more. Oopsie, that's not gonna work. Let's just copy paste that. Oopsie, not that one, the Elven one. Where'd you go? There we go, I have to do it over again, my bad. There we go, a little bit higher up. That way we have a little bit of a higher water line. So let's bring it up to maybe here. This is kind of where I want the water line to be. It's right about here. But I want it to be far enough on the surface so that I can kind of make some interesting scenes on the top part. Uh, the closer your water line is to the base, that means you have less room. So make sure it's pretty high um, so that if you want to show things on the surface that you can. Don't put your water level low, put your water high up. So that way you can draw or make, piece together the scene that you want that's gonna be on the top of the water, okay? So keep that part in mind. Okay, and I'll just leave that there for a guide for now. Maybe I'll just put it in the back like this. Water line's about there. That should work for me, I'm digging that. And so we have that base structure right there, and then we'll build a series of other buildings, maybe going along the ridge. And we can connect them with bridges. So this will be like a kind of a giant kind of underground structure with both a temple kind of set up, a ruined section, um, and then some other things. Feel free to add suggestions too if you see anything else that interests you. Let's go ahead and shift to this and we'll connect bridges to the next thing. So it'll look like this. We'll add something right here. So if we want, we can put another bridge, maybe, or another structure on top like this. And then we can take this one right here. Again, drop that saturation, set it to the other, other angle. And it should go right on top, one second. There we go. And so you have a series of bridges already kind of connecting. Already has that kind of dark tower vibe or dark citadel kind of vibe to it. Um, but don't worry, we're going to be adding color into it so it doesn't look all dark and dreary like the gray that it is currently. Okay. And then we can even add probably one more, one more bridge, maybe a smaller one right here, connecting to another peak right here, I think might look good. Let's try that. Let's put it down like this. Make sure it's set above. There we go. Did someone say something? Someone might want to mute their mic. Okay, never mind. All right. Uh, and then we'll add one on top here as well. There we go, like that. So we kind of have this nice series of towers. One just goes all the way up to the top like this. This is where our surface is going to be. And we'll start adding some things 
into the cliffside to make it look a little more interesting. I do think there are some uh, karst stuff that's from our kind of eastern set, I think. Yeah, there are these karst and these just karst dwellings. These ones will work really well. You can put them down like on top, like let's say like right here, like this. Let's try to find that. This is again where you're trying to find a section with the line work to try to line it up. So like you have this ridge that connects against here, like this. So we've connected this ridge right here. This ridge kind of connects into here like this. So you're, you're getting the general idea of lining up the line work. So that way it kind of goes well together. I understand that it's a different uh, a different color, and that's that's understandable. If we want, we can just drop that saturation down like we have have been, and we can select all the mountains as well and just make them gray for now too. That's fine. I'm just gonna do it for now. We'll go back if we need to. Just gonna go with gray for now. Just select them all. Just for now, and we'll make changes as we see fit too. So. Don't worry, this one as well. One second while I set that all up. Okay, there we go. And I'm also gonna go with a gray background for now. Just gonna put everything together for now first and then we'll go on to the next step. FG, hey, if you remember how to do a quick fill, just go across like this. Make sure it's set to the FG layer, click apply, enter. That way you got that gray texture, okay. So we're coming together, 128 changes, we're getting into the danger zone here. Okay, sweet. If anyone has any questions, feel free, throw it in the stream chat one. I'm open to answer, answer questions. Okay, we're saving and we're gonna continue adding in more pieces to kind of bolster the scene that we want. And we'll put a bunch of structures underwater as well. Other buildings like this nice one right here looks good. I'm okay with that. You could even see if it looked good, you know, in general. Like, does it look good maybe higher up on the tower? Does it look okay like that? You know, there's all kinds of ways you can go about it. I think I saw some other things as well, like a large one right here. Excuse me, a large karst dwelling. So you could maybe put one like right here. And I'm putting them also at the base of the towers too, to kind of hide the line work because these don't mesh well together. And I can show you, show you a quick trick on how to fix that as well. When you're putting like a tower on top of something and then it just doesn't kind of look right because of that line work and you want to nestle it in more, take that same mountain range that you use, only a smaller version, drop the saturation down. And if you make sure that it's set a layer above the tower and you can just place a mountain stamp let me get it, make sure it's set to the right layer like this. And you can, you know, uh, kind of set it up strategically where you want it to be, line up the line work, and then you're kind of hiding some of the line work. And that's really helpful. We can do it to other things as well. So maybe you want to put one right here like this. Let me make sure it's set to the right layer. There you go. And again, just make sure the mountains are, uh, just make sure the line work is set up. And so that way you're kind of hiding uh, how the straight lines here and it looks like like some of it was built in to kind of the mountain a little bit So it makes it look a little bit more realistic and I like that and I'm gonna put another one right over here to Do something I didn't use so right there Make sure the line work looks good. Yeah, it's okay And I always do this when I put like a tower or something on top of a mountain use those smaller ones <clears throat> to kind of again uh, Make it look like it's built into the mountain and again make sure you line up that line work Again, you see right here, the line work here, line work here, all that lines up so that it looks like there's some continuity in the line work. That always helps. Colorblind map, no color. That's right, F your color, no color. Don't worry, we'll put color in there. <laughs> That's gonna happen. Let's just keep going. I don't need to put that one there. I'm actually gonna use this instead. Ooh, that might not work. Let me flip it real quick and maybe we can put it over here. This one we can delete, put it along here. Maybe. This part is kind of hard. What about, ooh, let's, let's see if I can fit it into this ledge right here. Yeah, that looks okay. The line work is not too bad. Cool, we have some nice parts here. 
I can probably put that back there. That's going to be okay. I think there's one more. Is there another karst one? Let me check. Uh, yeah, there's this karst dwelling right here, and this might work as well. Drop that saturation down. And we're, we're going to change things a lot, change color. We're going to do all this stuff. Let's see if this looks good up against this ridge right here. I'm not so sure yet. This is always, I feel like, some of the hardest part. It's just trying to line this up right. I think that looks pretty good. That looks pretty good. I'm okay with that. We could even maybe flip this one around. And put that uh, maybe up against this ridge right here. Let me see where I can fit it, where it might look good. That looks okay like that. There we go. Okay. All right. I'm going colorless. How could I? So bad. We can select all of it and then just fix it. <laughs> Uh, well, it's just like me to go backtracking. <laughs> yes, rotating regional stamps is an absolute nightmare. It is. It's true. It's uh, kind of a pain in the rear. That, that's a fact. Okay, let's take a look at what we got so far. And we could uh, think about adding some filters to it. Right now, I'll kind of throw in uh, right now kind of a winter one right here this is just just to get us started so we have some nice blue and what we could do is make it to where uh, everything that's underwater is going to have gray with a blue tint to it because it's going to be underwater and you're going to have there's less oxygen in the water and so it's going to distort um, what things look like for you because again this human eye relies on a lot of oxygen to cause focus if you want to focus something underwater you have to wear goggles obviously where there's a little layer of oxygen so that you can see underwater because our eyes aren't built for that. Okay, let's see where we're at here. Yeah, that filter's gonna work fine. And then once we get the water part, we can desaturate some of those top parts. And then that way your eye will be in focus. You'll see the full color and there won't be any kind of a blue uh, filter going over uh, this kind of gray area. So that's what we're gonna end up doing. Let's keep building on to here and then we'll move on to the next part. So someone said they wanted ruins and, you know, I like that idea. So we'll pick a section for ruins. Let's go back to the elf stuff. That's the, the stuff that we've decided to use. Like we use that elf tower. So for some continuity, um, let me do this real quick. Oops. Uh-oh. Taking a little while to load there. Sorry about that. Slow sonic weapon. Okay, let me turn off the filter real quick because I think it is causing a little bit of lag and I don't want to do that. That's that's annoying me, so don't do that. Okay. Come on. So slow. Loading so slow. One second here. No, what? No, don't look at that. Don't look at that. <laughs> okay, let me try to L E L. See if I can find Elf. There we go. Okay, so I'm gonna use these. Uh, I like these a lot. I think these buildings will look kind of good. Yeah, they're different from these kind of uh, Eastern set. I know it's a bit different, but since we're kind of using this the Elf set already for the top of this tower, maybe we can do the same uh, for the underwater bits underwater bits <clears throat> you didn't see anything do as I do the wax sound walks off hands you didn't see anything Jedi mind tricks yeah exactly <laughs> okay uh, okay I might remove some of these right here uh, maybe I can move them over to here and in this central part, I'll put like a main kind of structure. And so we'll put one here and I'll look at the other stamps. So we're gonna slowly kind of piece together kind of this, this city. And don't forget to put them on top of things as well. Like if you wanna put one on top of this building right here, you wanna put something uh, on top of, let's see here, where's another one? This one right here, this Elven building looks nice. Maybe we can put that up against this ledge right here. 
and we'll change it to gray shortly. Let's look at our other options. This one looks pretty good. Let's see here. Where would I put this? Maybe we can hide some of the, let me, let me think here. Uh, right about there looks okay. I know that there's kind of this door right here that kind of goes to a cliff, so maybe we'll have to hide that. But that's not gonna, that's not gonna work. Why would you do that? Okay, and we can include maybe putting one in the back, like right here, like this. So it looks like this piece is like connected and it goes further in the back. And we might wanna consider maybe just doing the same with this one, I'm not sure. Let me just check. Maybe we want to connect these together. Just depends. It's the hard part is kind of just connecting and getting the line work right. How do I want that to go? No, that might not work. Let's see here. Let's delete that. So far, so good. And I will make sure to select every single one of these and just drop that saturation down. There we go. And we'll be adding all that nice color in shortly. Don't worry. So it's not going to be in the gray zone forever. My tricks don't work on me, only new content. <laughs> okay. Oh, these are cool. I like these kind of like, whatever these things are. It kind of looks like a bartizan is what it looks like. A bartizan is like a, a bartizan that goes on the edge of your, your towers like this. That's what a bartizan is. Kind of like that. <clears throat> They're like this. So this is what a bartizan, bartizans would look like. And you can add in a couple in there. Let's just bring it down a layer and put it right here like that. So you can do that. <clears throat> I like I like bartizans. I think it's like one of my favorite castle pieces. Bartizans are amazing. So you have this nice like kind of bartizan piece here. I just love these. These are so cool. And you can add them anywhere. Let's maybe put another one over here, like here, like this. I'm going to have to go up a layer, I think, above this. Oopsie. I think that's a layer, negative five, or positive five. Let's go down one. There we go. And I can add in these bartizans here, 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 like this. And then just copy and paste and bring them down a layer. And then, boom, you have your bartizans there. Yeah. Oh, yeah, I love that. Oh, yeah, that's so cool. Love me Zimbardizans. Ah! Awesome. I'm glad you could make it too, Pandora. I'm glad you're here. Thanks, Yarash. I appreciate that. That's kind of you. And we'll keep adding in more Bardizans as well. I think these just look really nice. Uh, let's see what other options we have here in the set. There's a series of towers. I think that's super important. Um, and maybe we want to nestle in. There is a giant castle piece that's in there. Why don't we actually put that in the negative space? I was looking through the catalog and I just noticed it, but maybe we want that central piece. I just noticed this big elven castle right here, and this might work just fine for what we're looking for. So maybe I can push that all the way into here, make it fairly big. I think it's gonna be pretty big. Let me check, and I might wanna consider removing some of these cliffs so I can nestle it in without those cliffs getting in the way. Let's go up even bigger. This is going to be just massive. Nestle it in right there. I think that looks pretty good. That's okay. And then we can kind of fit this piece in as well to make it match. Put in this piece right here. Let's put it right here and see how it looks. Yeah, that looks okay. And then we want to maybe put another one over here. Let's put it small so it kind of fits on this piece right here nice and neatly and then maybe this one can be kind of the main entrance part and i'll try to connect the base of these together so this is kind of that main entrance piece you walk right in right there there's other entrance part right here so we got that kind of set up let me take a step back yeah i think that looks good so far that nice tower and maybe we'll put in some docks or something that are going to be out here and maybe that's the way that you enter kind of this thing it takes you to this maybe big elevator that takes you about you know an hour to get down to the bottom depending on how fast it is maybe some kind of like water elevator where you know you uh re releases in oxygen and then maybe it drops some kind of scientific way uh mix between magic and science to make this water elevator that makes takes you up and down and maybe there's only one way to get to it who knows so kind of some fun stuff 
Okay, let's take a look. It's 87 changes, still looks okay to me. All right, sweet. So we're kind of getting to that part where maybe you want to add some parts that look like it's the ocean. And there's some great stamps in the fantasy battle mat style called coral. And it's really great to just plaster coral everywhere. And you can also use some other stamps to create this illusion of barnacle. And I'll show you that really cool trick on how to make barnacle. And we'll put barnacle all along uh, the tower so that it looks like it's got this cool, like big pieces of barnacle growing all over it. I think that would look really sweet. So we'll do, oh, what's this? Uh, well, according to Minecraft, we just need soul sand. <laughs> so I'm gonna put barnacle uh, for starters on top of this tower. Where are we for time, an hour? Okay, don't wanna take forever. Uh, we're going to go to the fantasy world style and we're gonna type in crater. And these stamps right here, they really do look like barnacle to me when you put them up against like this and then just change that saturation and maybe the brightness too so it kind of isn't so popping out too much. And if you just place them right along here, you can even change that contrast a little bit if you want so the lines are a little bit more noticeable because we're making those lines look much, much more prominent and bring the brightness down a hair so it matches in more. And then you just copy and paste and warp and change the size of these and you get this nice, what I think is like kind of this nice barnacle look to it. So copy, paste, add another one in there, like right here, make it a little bit smaller, copy, paste, make another one. And we can even change the transform, like the width and the height to make it look more distorted. So you want a crazy piece of article like this, copy, paste, put a smaller one right here. And what you have is like this nice barnacle look to it. And what I'm gonna do is just copy and paste all of these on every single thing and then I'll, on every single one of the sections of the tower and then we'll rearrange them Okay, the copying and pasting, changing up the palette thing is extremely useful. So I'm just gonna place this here, here, and then we'll put another one here. And I'm just gonna go to each section now and just change it up so I can put a piece of barnacle there, put this one right here. So now it's different from that top one. I can move maybe some barnacle down here, here, move this one over to here, and this one over to here like this. And so you're just changing each one. And that way, it doesn't look the same. So now you've added some nice barnacle there. I really love, love barnacle. I think it looks really cool. And you can do that same trick with that barnacle on anything, a ship, put it on some rocks, whatever you want to add it on. But that's just my barnacle trick I like to go with. <clears throat> that next step is to kind of add in as much coral as possible. And so if we just go out of Fantasy World and go to Fantasy Battle Maps 2.0, and type in coral, then you'll have a whole bunch of coral options to work with. So let me type in coral. Okay, and you have all these various coral options and you just pick which one you want. Um, we could go different sections, has different coral. I have no idea while Fay stuff is showing up in coral. Um, I like this seafloor coral because this is the kind of seafloor and just place one down not quite yet, sorry. Let's go with dropping the saturation down. Go to filters, saturation. And I kind of want to make the coral look really big. So go in like this and start putting in your coral pieces. There's only two to work with in this particular stamp. So you have to be like original and resize things, rotate them as you go. So it's gonna be some custom work if you want like this coral to work right. So just kind of keep that in mind. I'll make this a little bit bigger like this. And I'll also be doing shadow work as well. So make sure some of them kind of overlap each other because it's coral, there's a lot of it. Coral is basically like the forest of the seafloor. That is where like a lot of nutrients, food comes from, just like in a forest, the trees, root system supports life for all life in the forest basically because it works with fungus and it also uh, provides nutrients to other trees and plants that might be dying. The forest is, the trees are kind of like shepherds of the forest, just like a coral in a fantasy sense is like the shepherd of the sea. It takes care of uh, a lot of the, it dictates a lot of the, uh, what the happenings and the food sources, the temperature of the ocean, a lot of things. So coral is really important and definitely add it in your underwater scenes. 
and have it even grow up on maybe some of the towers like this it goes up to the tower maybe even put one up here higher up like this so put that coral kind of everywhere and use it also to hide things so i'm going to hide a lot of the line work here as well so if you don't want that to be showing just hide it put some coral work here hello welcome everybody okay uh, that looks good so this section looks pretty good to me so far let me just keep maybe hiding in some line work let me go with something really small so i already have like large coral let's just put in some random small ones like this so that I kind of break up that quote unquote monotonous size issue I like to call it. I don't know what you would call it in real life. This here, here. So you've got this nice coral growing up into there. Nice. And then you can select all of them like that. Go to your shadows. I'm just going to go with zero, zero. And the way to show these look like there's some more depth to them, you can uh, just drop the shadow a little bit below, like this, and already a little bit that shadow, the shadow underneath will start to, oh, oopsie, the shadow's above, my mistake, let me go back, my, my bad, go down, my bad, like this, and we're going to make sure it's just a little bit, not too much. And what this kind of does is it kind of makes it pop out more. It looks like it's not just a, uh, just a flat stamp. That shadow below helps to make it pop out by using contrast. So you have this nice coral section right here. And you want to show like a path of growth, like where it's kind of growing and everything. And I'm going to copy and paste just a couple more small ones up here. So just a couple little bit more smaller ones to kind of make it look more realistic. Copy paste, put a small one over here, over here like this. I think that looks okay. Let's add a small another one over here. Excuse me. There we go. Okay, I think that looks okay. I'm gonna take a step back. Yeah, so far so good. Let's just save that. Whoo, 338 changes. Ooh, that's you know, that's not as dangerous as you think. I don't know if you've ever made like a forest or you're trying to blend in something with textures. I swear, if you make a forest, you're at like a thousand changes within just a couple of seconds because you're trying to make this huge forest. I think for me, I had like a thousand plus changes and it was just in a couple of minutes too because I was making a forest, you know? Um, you know, especially if you have that density brush and you're making these giant swaths of forest, then yeah, absolutely. You're gonna get into like thousands of changes in just a couple strokes and that can be scary. Okay, let's take a look. All right, so far so good. I'm gonna also take uh, another Elven Tower. Let me type in L, L, E, -L. oh, come on. E, L, there we go. A little slow, but it's working. Oopsie, I'm in the wrong style too, my bad. Naughty, naughty. Fantasy Regional. It's just a little slow. I think I saw some towers that might do well uh, to put maybe on the top of some of these things. Like we could maybe scooch this one down quite a bit and then just put this kind of on top. Drop that saturation. So you have the kind of this nice peak and I might want to even drop the brightness down and just copy and paste that and then put that one on top of here as well. Let me make sure that's on the right layer. There we go. So this peak right here is in front of it. You can see it. Uh, and then, <clears throat> you know what? I think I'll copy and paste these same things, right? This whole arrangement right here and just put it over here. You see the beauty of, of, of copy and pasting. So much easier. Nice. And I'm thinking of even putting uh, some of these up here as well. It might look interesting. Let me delete this one, put this along here, and I think I might make these just a little bit bigger. So let's maybe take them up to 65. And we'll put one right here. Wait a minute, that's the front one, that one I'm gonna do. Put one here like this, and then we'll put another one right here. And then copy, paste, and just flip it. And there's the other one right there. So we'll add that there, there we go. 
So far, so good. All right, yeah, I'm okay with this. Uh, let's also maybe uh, turn the saturation off on or on or off on that one because we want to use this actually as the point where there's some actual color going on because there's not this distortion from oxygen or from a lack of oxygen that you have underwater. And we'll continue with the barnacle or continue with adding a little bit more uh, coral. So go back to that fantasy battle map 2.0 and then type in coral in that search field and look at your options. I, I do like this kind of coral right here. This looks kind of nice. And it's just the same technique that we did here. Let's add in a couple large ones first. Put a big one here, here. Again, hide some of that line work if you can. That's always a good idea. And that seems like we can bring them down another size and bring it down another size and bring it down another size. And let's have some of it growing up alongside this building as well. There we go. And maybe even some along here. This looks okay to me. That's okay to me. Okay. And then we're gonna select all of them with our little nice select all from the stamp set trick. Drop that saturation down. Go to the object settings. Drop the blur down. Let's go to zero, zero. And we'll bring them down. So you can kind of see the shadow a little bit. And also, I think these look a little dark. So I might want to consider maybe just boosting the contrast or the brightness a little bit. It's up to you how you want to go about it. So you have this other kind of coral along here. And if we want, we can also copy and paste them to be kind of going, growing up this tower as well. So that way you have that more realistic look to it. And add some small ones in like this. There we go. Let's have it kind of climbing up this tower. Oopsie, we're gonna have to put it up a layer minus day. There we go. And go with a smaller size, even smaller still. Kind of have some going along here. There we go. So you have some coral growing up there. So I think so far so good. Let me just take a step back and look at it. Yeah, it's coming together. We'll get we're getting to that underwater part soon. Don't worry. Wow, already 50 minutes. <laughs> wow. Awesome. I'm okay with it so far. How does it look okay? How does it look so far, everybody? Okay? Do we need, are we going in the right direction? So far, so good. I need reassurances. I have a low self-esteem issues. Actually, that's a very serious issue. That's a very serious issue. And that, that's a problem. Needs a little color. <laughs> well, we haven't got to the color part yet. You just have to wait. <laughs> You're impatient, Panda. We get to the color part soon. Patience, my friend, patience. We'll get there, don't worry. I promise you. No panda, no, no, no panda labs. No color whatsoever. <laughs> this will be devoid of color. <laughs> this, is gonna, this is a black and white film only, okay? <laughs> yeah, don't worry, panda, we'll put it in there. Panda labs, we will. I'll get your color in there. Don't you worry. There are, are ways of getting color well beyond just using uh, the color from the stamps. There is a lot of ways to go about it. So don't worry, we will get there. I can assure you of that. Okay, so let's get to the water part since some people are getting impatient, I think. <laughs> so <clears throat> let's turn on the grid real quick. And I'm gonna be using the grid as kind of a guide. And I don't know if people know about this yet, but we have added kind of like a segment section I'm not sure if this is an admin or if this is a if this is available of or not on regular website. So maybe I'm showcasing something I'm not supposed to. I'm not sure, uh, but we do have this part with segments in it. Not sure if it's been released yet, but I'm going to be using it, and I'm just going to be kind of creating a guide that's going to help me to put together um, the the outline part 
So I'm going to zoom in and try to find out where I want my water level to be. So I have to pick, pick a point right here. You can hold down shift here. I hope this option is available to everybody. I don't know if it is or not. I have to check that. Shift, put it together, connect with this one, I think. Let me check. Yeah, that looks right. Oopsie. Well, you're not supposed to know about that yet. Uh, great, great, I love myself. <laughs> well, I'm showcasing them by accident now. <laughs> uh, life. <laughs> Okay, I'm just gonna put the, sh uh, the grid to layer zero or negative five because it, I don't want it to be overlapping anything. Okay, yeah, it's not available yet, my bad. I did not mean to just showcase that, super brilliant. I think I'm gonna have to cut that part out. <laughs> super smart, buddy. Ugh, I'm so smart. Okay, let's just, we'll get to this part later. Let me just put this together. And I'm kind of creating the the box part where the water is going to be. So I'm just setting this up for now. Oopsie, go back to that. What did I do? I'm going to copy, paste these, rotate them. Well, now you know what to look forward to. <laughs> Oopsie. Okay, there we go. Okay. I'm not keeping that. That's all going to go away. It's just a guide. <laughs> It's just a guy. Uh, awesome. So glad I just, just showed you all that. Uh. <laughs> okay, let's also select every single, uh, I'm gonna select pretty much every single thing that's on here except for those paths maybe, and just group them. So I think I can select everything here and I'm gonna group it. Well, I'm not so sure if I want to do that or not because that line work gets in the way, but we'll fix it. Don't worry. We will fix this. Get rid of that ruins part. And we're going to get to the part where we're going to start painting in things. And I'll show you how to add in water. That's going to be fun. And there's going to be flattening involved as well, as well as filters. So I'll show you how to do all that stuff. Ooh. Now, I'm sure all of you have seen the the tilt shift filter, right? I can showcase that, right? <laughs> tilt shift might work good because then I can maybe put like a blur under the under the water part and stuff like that. So yes, tilt shift is available. Yay! Yay, I didn't F that up. Oh, goody. So glad. <laughs> okay. All right. So we're going to go ahead and add in a water texture and I'm going to fill in kind of the lines with this. I'll show you how to go about that without making any mistakes because this, this part can be kind of difficult. So we're going to go to the texture catalog and we're going to search all styles and type in water and kind of pick the water texture that looks best, uh, looks kind of best. So first let's just type in water like this. All the water options are going to pop up. You've got some nice rich water textures here. Let's see here, oh, some face stuff, this underwater one right here. Uh, this one right here might work. Let me just test it out. I'm gonna use the uh, rectangular shape. And make sure it's set to that BG layer. And I'm just gonna try to fill in as much of this as possible without having to paint. And just kind of press enter, it should be on BG layer. And this whole thing will turn turn blue. And the same thing, if you want, you can either just go right in with uh, the grid brush and then you can kind of fill in the rest. Oopsie, that is not the right thing. I'm using the add mode of the mask tool. That is not what I'm looking for. <laughs> Oopsie, <laughs> my bad. And then just kind of fill in the rest like this. Make it easier for yourself. Now, sometimes it can be kind of hard to free hand fill in a section. And that's why I've kind of used also the isometric grid to make the water part a little bit easier for myself. Like this, there we go, go all the way down. I'm just gonna do the edges first, fill it in. Sometimes the grid, looks like the grid tool's a little laggy uh, in 3K. So I'm just gonna switch over to brush, make sure my softness is all the way down and just kind of fill in 
the rest of the space like this so I don't have to do that grid laggy grid like that and then you can go right ahead and just kind of delete all the paths that you just had there so let's just go select all and if you delete all the paths you'll notice that you've got this nice kind of water setup that you want I'm in fact I'm probably gonna keep uh, these lines actually and then just drop the opacity down because I'm just gonna make this the parameters of the box like this and then I'll just select them all and drop the opacity because I don't want them to be super bright to where they pop out I just want it to be the hint of line work so it looks like I'm kind of encasing it so if I just drop that opacity down a little bit like this bring it down bring it down even more down, 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 down. That looks okay to me, as long as you have enough to actually see the line. Let me just go out. Yep, I can see the line. And then the next part is to kind of um, create uh, the waviness, because you wouldn't expect the, the top of the water to be like this, where it's just completely straight. Water is not flat. Obviously, if you're doing a chunk of water Minecraft style, the water is not going to be flat. Minecraft it will be, but in this, we don't want that. So the way to go about that will be to kind of paint in. So if I go over to here, click that brush again, make sure set to BG, and just kind of create like some wave like this. And that way you're kind of getting rid of that flat feeling that you would not expect to be the water surface to be. We're out in the ocean and oceans, ocean swells can get up to like 20 feet tall you know out in the deep ocean okay or even maybe not that tall i think some of them are can get that hard a swell is just a, a wave that's what a swell is if you don't know what that is so you can make your swells or your waves really big and then uh what i like to do after doing that is you just take the path tool and i like to just go over like this and this is kind of just that outline like we had before like this and I might have to change it. And all I'm doing is just kind of creating an outline so I have the parameters like this. And I'm going to have to bring them back a little bit too. This has to go back a little. There we go. That's has to go a layer behind. And I'm going to uh, copy and paste this line work so I have a guide to work with so that I know uh, the line work. So if I copy and paste this like this and put it across, like this. I'm just going to use this as a guide. These lines are my guide. If you want to know how to make lines, uh, it's not too hard. Just use the text tool like this since that, that segment isn't in there. Um, if I remember correctly, I do believe that metamorphosis plus shift like this, this is how you create your line work. That's it. And you can drop the opacity on it, whatever you want. So that's how you do line work until that segment section is out. But that's how you do your line work. It's just super easy. Uh, obviously, once the segment part comes out, uh, this will be even easier with just a simple point and click. But in the meantime, this is the workaround. Okay, now I'm going to select uh, this path, make sure the parameters are the same. And I'm just using this line work, remember, as a guide. So just go like this until you get to the center. Go like this until you get to the edge there and then just take those long lines let me see is the right one delete that one and then is this the right one delete that one okay and so now you have to have that wave part and that's the first part there's a little more to it than that um, we're gonna have to start flattening th things pretty soon and we're gonna have to start putting where the ocean connects with this tower because it looks like it's a, uh, it, right now it doesn't look right. So we have to do all these kind of changes. And don't worry, we'll get to that. We want to make sure that this is also a layer above. And so is this one. I want to be a layer above. Let me just check. Really is great. Thank you, Laura. I appreciate that. Ooh, thank you. Hey, Callum. I'm glad you're enjoying the demo. I absolutely love making underwater scenes. So we're getting there. So we've done that part. We're at 52 changes. Let's just save. We got about 40 minutes left in the stream and we're going to probably flatten some things pretty soon first we want to add the proper ground texture it has a lot of artifacts and kind of gives it this kind of like rugged groundscape and so we'll get to that 
Let's do that too. So brush tool, FG layer, because remember the top of the isometric block here is, is, a, um, <clears throat> is the FG layer. Open up the catalog and uh, let's get rid of custom assets. Doesn't need to be in there. And let's go to Fantasy Battle Maps. I do find that Fantasy Battle Maps 2.0 uh, does have some really great textures that might work for underground. Uh, let's just take a look at the options. There's this nice dirt one right here. There's also some uh, cracked ground like this one, this gray cracked ground. You could add that on there too. Let's just uh, change the size and advanced settings. And let's apply it to the, the FG just to see what it kind of looks like. There we go. Yeah, I like that. That adds a little bit of character. And there's now you've got some nice ridges in there um, and that kind of stuff. And in fact, we, we can probably just remove some of these cliffs because uh, a lot of this texturing is kind of doing the cliff work for us, which is kind of nice. So we'll delete some of those cliffs because they kind of don't interact well with this. And then and a real quick tip that I used in uh, creating a dungeon. One second, I'm gonna take out my sweatshirt. It's really, really toasty in here. Okay, so I mentioned this in a dungeon video, but I'm gonna show you how to do uh, some, how to make more depth using one texture. So I'm gonna save this texture because this is a texture that I'm working with. It will show up on my favorites, so it's right there. I'm gonna go in and I'm going to change the brightness to make it a little bit darker, 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 darker. Let's go with maybe 49. And then I'm gonna go in with my edgy brush, or not edgy brush, but FG layer, circular brush, softness all the way up and maybe drop this down to about 46%. And what you're gonna do is take sections, take some of the line work to show depth. So let's say I want this ledge right here to look a little bit darker then just take that dark part of that texture and go in here like this. And what you're doing is kind of creating this illusion of more depth by just taking in a section of it. And you can make it even darker still like this by just applying it again. And you're kind of creating this nice dark section where it looks like there's some depth there. And you can do that along any ledge along here. Again, you're kind of creating this dark, 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 dark ledge adding some depth. You can do the same thing along this ledge here if you want, and that will make it look like it's uh, a little bit more like depth to that ridge. And then uh, let's also put some right here. I think this little section right here might look good a little dark. Right here, this section can look a little bit darker. Let's take a look here as well. Uh, there's a nice section right here. We can kind of make that a little bit darker. And we can add another section in right here to make it a little bit darker as well. There we go. And then you can go and just take that same texture from your favorites that you've just used and then just go to brightness and then boost up the brightness quite a bit. And let's say that you want to show that this section is higher than that darker section, then just apply that lighter texture. Let's go up a little bit more to 70 and then it'll be a little bit brighter, a little bit lighter right here, a little bit lighter along this edge here where the dark contrast is, so it makes it look like it pops out more. Add a little bit more along that ledge. Let's add one along this ledge here, this ledge here. Let's keep looking at where our ledges are. One can go right here along that ledge. And so already you're kind of creating this sense of larger depth by putting lighter color on the top part of the ridge and in the lower part of the ridge down below by making it darker. So now you're kind of using the texture as is, is to uh, make different variations of that texture with filters and then just applying light dark in certain areas to make those things pop out. It's a really big secret. Absolutely love it. Uh, are we recording if we miss some parts? Yes, this is recorded one. Are there open for suggestions? Yeah, <laughs> me, of course. There are always open for suggestions, of course. I may not do it. I'll try to be honest with you. I might not do it because we are about 35 minutes away from finishing this, and I want to take take too long. Um, so just be understanding if I don't take it, I'm not doing it to be vicious or cruel. It's just that we have a very small time frame. 
too late to turn the box into a city in a bottle. You know, that might work for another one, another time, and that would be difficult, and that would take a little while. But I do like the idea, because I do like ships in a bottle. I think that looks pretty cool. Okay, where are we at? 29 changes, let's save. And let's go back up to the top, and let's try to decide where the water level is, where the tower meets the surface of the water. Okay, so we have to do that part. And that part can be kind of difficult. So let's take a look here. So let's say, oh yeah, I can see already the shadows right here. Ah, oh, oh, bum. I can't stand it. <laughs> Built-in shadows are the devil. <laughs> okay, so let's figure out where where the water's gonna connect. So I'll just use the path tool again for right now and figure out where uh, the water level is. Let me just take a look here. Let me try kind of using where this is against here. Let me see. Uh, yeah, I'm going to say right about here where this second piece is uh, below is probably where our water level is going to be. And for now, I'm just going to just go like this. So it looks like there's water. And we'll put crashing waves and other stuff. This is just a good start to work with. And all you're doing is just kind of creating the ripples that are emanating away from the object that is in the water. That's it. Oopsie, I'm kind of noticing a problem there. Hmm, I love showcasing bugs. It's the most wonderful thing in the world. Okay. All right, so that's kind of where our water level is. So that works good. We'll put crashing waves. We'll put some other stuff in there. Let's see where we are right now. I might go into just flattening this whole thing. I'm not quite sure yet. Let me look at the option parts here. Let me go with this whole tower, this whole section of this tower right here probably should be uh, flattened to uh, the BG. Let me just real quick just test this out just to make sure. Let me go with flatten to BG. Oops, I forgot about that part. So that's a problem. So I'm going to have to go in and probably take a section of the tower. I think this section right here. Oh, this is going to be a pain in the rear. Oh, I might have to flatten the whole thing to get it to work. So let me just save real quick and we'll get to the flattening the whole the whole thing bit. So, yeah, another abuse of the path tool. Of course, it's it's we can call it kind of the path tool, I guess. It's path tool sorta. Don't flatten clone it, bro. <laughs> well, I would definitely clone it, of course. I would not at all recommend uh, doing any kind of flattening until you've saved and made a clone of it. Absolutely. You make a good point. You make good points, Panda and King Clown. Absolutely clone. I actually don't prefer to flatten my option my general options are to try to make it work without flattening but sometimes that's not always the case sometimes you just have to flatten and there's just no getting around it that's it's just the way it is like you, you can try and it doesn't work out okay so let's just take a look here at the base i want to make sure everything is kind of the way i want it first before I decide to do flattening, make sure that you've completed all of your all of the stuff that you want down here first. Since we're short on time, I'm not going to show any more. I think the last thing I might do real quick is to kind of create like a little seaweed forest. And there should be some seaweed in here, right here. And I'm going to use this tall stuff right here that's kind of wiggly because this one, this stuff is kind of tall and I kind of like that. I'll bring that saturation down. And I'm not going to turn on random stamp or random location. And I'm just going to kind of place them like this. And I'll put in other smaller ones as well so it doesn't look all the same. And don't forget to also flip and rotate so they're not all in the same direction. So I'm just kind of placing this, kind of creating this seaweed forest. I'm going to fill in the negative spaces with this so that um, that way it's not looking too bare in some of those negative spaces. So I'll put a whole bunch of seaweed in here. Don't forget to flip. Don't forget to put in the other one, a smaller one. 
Okay, there we go. So we got some seaweed there. And it's also nice because it removes that flat edge right there. And so it covers some of that flatness. And that's nice. That's what you kind of want. And I'll even put just a couple over here, just kind of stragglers, just to kind of break up that straight line. It's nice to kind of hide that. Okay. He's going to flatten it. Oh, God. Oh, no. It's like, ah. Oh. How could you? How could you betray us with these with this flattening? I I feel betrayed. <laughs> How could you, Maddie? Flattening is uh <laughs> I very rarely flatten, I'll tell you right now. I try my best to not flatten, but there are some circumstances where you just have to because I want a certain texture to show up over something and there's no way that I can do that without flattening. I did the same thing with that um, that underwater city that I made because there was just no way that I could that I could change that. So let's just go out. I'm going to return to my maps and I'm going to go over here, go to clone like this. And we'll go ahead and open the clone up. Okay, and this is that fun part. Oopsie, let me, uh, I'll show you what I'll be doing, just one second. Okay, so how I'm gonna do this is I'm going to delete every single thing. Uh, first, let me uh, export this as a texture. So I'm gonna export, it's in 3K. So this is gonna be an export. Give it a second. So there's our image, nice, I'm cool with that. Okay, and then the next step is just to delete everything on the map. I'm going to delete everything. And then I'm also going to remove uh, any land that I have. So subtract mode and just remove all this. Like this. Get rid of everything. And I'm also going to change the background all the way to black. Go to BG. Go to color black. Cover the whole thing. Okay. So now that's completely covered. Now we're going to go into our texture catalog, not color, texture. And we're going to upload, choose an image. And we're going to choose our underwater scene. Now you're going to have to adjust the dimensions on this, just so you know. And we're going to paint it onto the BG layer. And then I can start adding in light sources to give certain areas color. And I can start adding in a whole bunch of other things as well. So because there is a lack of color, and that's okay, because um, we're going to deal with really crisp color above the surface. And we're going to go with kind of diminished blur and kind of a little bit less color underwater, as you would kind of expect. Um, and I'm just looking at it from that perspective. So custom asset, go to the top. That's where your custom assets are. Select this. And you're going to have to go to advanced settings. You have to change that size so it's the right size. Uh, I think it might be 200. Let me just verify. Is it 200? No, not 2,000. What am I doing? Hold on a second. 200. No, it might have to be 300. Let me try again. Uh, no, it's a little bit. Looks like it's a little bit smaller than that. Let's go with 275. No, even less than that, maybe 250. Oops. And then I can also, one second, it takes a second. We did change things, unfortunately, and so that doesn't really help entirely. BG, press enter. There we go. And we can just paint that part out. Just go back to color and just whoop, remove that. And if you want it to be more on there, then we could uh, do it again real quick. Let me go back to that custom texture we just used. And I'm just going to change that offset so it's a little bit more this way, a little bit more centered. So we'll do that. Let's offset it just a little bit more. Okay, I think that looks good. Let's apply that. There you go. Okay, so that's been applied. I'm going to quickly save too. And I'm just going to save, and then we're going to put our textures, lights, stamps, and everything else over it. So I'm excited about that. Uh, I have to delete that. Sorry. We can't be showcasing that stuff, okay? 
Let's not be showcasing stuff like that. That's not appropriate. Sorry about that, Panda. You can't be doing that. That's a no-no. Please don't share screenshots of art that hasn't been released yet. And that's actually my fault because I used, uh, a I'm using a site that has my admin stuff in it. So if anything, that's my fault, Panda, not, not yours, just to let you know. I should, just shouldn't have done that. So I apologize. Don't worry, I'm not mad or anything. I don't upset easily, just to let you know. Hey, Jeremy, woo! Hey, you better be doing some time lapses, buddy. You better be doing some time lapses because I absolutely, absolutely want to see uh, some time lapses from you. Shame, shame. <laughs> I'm not upset. It's all good. No worries about it, Panda. I just don't want to... <clears throat> I could get in trouble with my boss. So let's not showcase stuff that hasn't been released yet. <laughs> just as a heads up. Yeah. Uh, I like my job. It's a nice one. <laughs> all right. So we'll go to Fantasy Battle Map 2.0. And I think there's a nice ocean texture right here. That might work good okay and then we're going to just apply that on the top part of it and i'm going to go to this brush right here turn off the softness and turn off or drop the opacity just a hair oh <laughs> okay and then what we're going to do is apply this texture over and remember not to accidentally touch the top part Let's just start with going over like this on this edge. And I don't know if the size is right yet. I don't know yet. We'll, we'll, we'll take a look in a second. Let me just make sure that the texture looks right. Yeah, it looks okay so far. Yeah, it looks all right. Might be too much. I don't know. We'll we'll put the first, we'll put one thing across first just to see how it looks. this oops don't want to go over my bad let me just do and do one whole try to do fill the whole thing in one stroke because it's set to a different opacity okay if you change things to a different opacity and i do another stroke like this it's going to make it brighter in that section so try to do it in one swoop if you can it's okay if you can't um, i honestly don't know if i really care for uh that at the current moment so it might change <laughs> Sorry, Panda Labs. It's just the way it is. <laughs> Again, my fault for not having the brain power to decide not to do that. So <laughs> only really one person to blame myself. <laughs> Oopsie. And then we'll probably just take that same texture again and maybe just uh, go over everything, the whole thing at a much lower opacity. So we can go in like this and get that nice kind of blue kind of color in there like that so we're at that nice step right there and then from there let me see from there what we're probably going to want to do is start adding in light sources to kind of give the color that we want am i a god no <laughs> far from a god <laughs> oh don't ever refer to me as a god that's so dangerous it's trying to inflate what Inflated ego I already have. <laughs> uh, okay, so this looks so good so far. Let's go in with that next step. We're going to add in some light sources, and then we'll add in a scene. So I'm just going to search all styles, type in light. And then there should be a bunch of light sources. Uh, oh, there's already one right here from Spooky Light, so maybe we can add that in there. Okay, and let's say that you want certain sections to be have certain color to it that you didn't have before. So what I like to do is just say I want some of this coral to kind of look like reddish or something. You can go in and just kind of select these two spooky lights, change the light source, change the sources to uh, change the color. So go to advanced setting hue. Let's say that you want uh, green, red, whatever color you guys want want to use. It's it's not a problem to me let's say purple okay and you want to add make something add purple then just go ahead and drop the size down or drop the opacity down you have this nice purple section add in more light sources if you want to keep going let's say that you want some of this coral to be brighter than others so just add some more light sources so you have this nice purple kind of coral going on 
and yet you're still not uh, drowning out any light too. You're trying to, the gray will kind of uh, help to make whatever light source, whatever you're lighting up with that light to make it pop out more. We use that quote often in our house. <laughs> love that scene. Yeah, love it. <laughs> Ray, when someone asks you if you're a god, you say, yes. <laughs> uh, Ghostbusters. Long time, huh? Let's see. Maybe a blue color would do well for these ones. So let's try maybe make a big one here, here. Oops, one here. Another one right here. And I'll just add in some other spots that have... A little bit more bright light on it there and then I'll add in a green one for maybe our seaweed there's green looks good to me and just put it on there got some nice green over here over here put some green over here okay and now let's say that you want to add some uh, light sources or some color that's coming out of these buildings or something like that, right? So let's say that we just want to go ahead and just take our regular light source right here and bring up the opacity. Let's maybe change it to normal for now. And then we can also just go in and kind of change it to where it's an oval shape. Go in like this and we can kind of just put that copy paste like this so that it looks like there's light coming out of these things so there's light coming out of that one let's say there's some light sources coming out of this one like this okay so if you don't like the yellow you can change it to whatever color you want you don't have to go with yellow it's perfectly fine if you want to go with a different color there's absolutely nothing wrong with that <clears throat> perfectly okay uh, i also maybe want to put these dots right here it might work well as some maybe some kind of light source so we can put some on each one of these dots there we go I think that looks okay let me just take a look oh no they all disappeared again ah oh, what is this bug why why you do this okay just just stay there okay don't 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 go anywhere just stay there <laughs> Okay, let's go up and then I'm gonna change that blend mode back to overlay because I want it to affect, I want it to uh, interact differently. And I'm gonna drop the opacity down just a bit, copy paste and just put these over like this. So it looks like it has some light. Here, 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 and then we'll go over here. Just make it the big one and just drop the opacity down so it's not too much. And same thing, just copy paste a couple here, a couple here, and a couple here, like this. And let's take a zoom out and just see how it looks. Yeah, it looks okay. Not too bad. Let's make a save since we're at 123 changes. Love the teal for water. Yeah, I agree. Uh, it doesn't have as much color as maybe you, you might want to. You can go back and select certain coral and change the color. Uh, what I would recommend if you do that is just make sure to uh, to drop the saturation down enough. So I'll, I'll give you an example real quick to show you how I do that. Now, because gray is not the only solution, I'm just using gray because I'm just trying to show, trying to apply different lights to it and to make it look a little bit different. So let's say that you do want some color into your coral, which oopsie, I just remembered this is flattened, so I can't change it. Dang it! I'll have to go back to the other thing and I'll show it to you. Don't worry. Let's uh, keep adding some let's do the un, a top part too as well so let's add in uh, some light sources let's put one at the top of here so it looks like a beacon and I'm gonna set this one to overlay and one thing I really like to do it's really fun is to kind of create ships uh, on the water and to rotate them so here you have the top part and we right now it's kind of undefined from the bottom part so we got to add in a series of waves and other things that kind of gives it uh, some direction so we got to make waves so let's type in waves and we don't really have isometric waves but we could probably use some of these C waves they might work fairly well for what we're looking for so what I would do is start creating a swell of some kind 
and a swell, like I said, is just a wave. And you're gonna have to do a little more than just placing a stamp, of course. You're probably gonna have to do a little bit of texturing and a couple other things. Uh, this is hard to see, so I might have to bump up the brightness and even include a object shadow that is white so that maybe that can kind of create this illusion of mist. So there we go, we have that. Um, yeah, that kind of helped to make that pop out more. So that's good. And so you're making a series of swells and swells are going to be in kind of a, uh, not necessarily uh, symmetrical, but there's gonna be gaps in between each swell. So you'll have a crest on top, which is the top of the swell, and then it goes down and then there'll be another swell with a crest further away. So you'll have to make a couple of these. So that's how uh, generally I do it. So we'll put these together, oopsie, and I think I need to make sure to add that object shadow. Sometimes I have this really bad habit of placing a stamp and then editing the, the, uh, the uh, settings of it, when really you should edit the settings before placing it. And that way you don't have to like do it again because you didn't do it when it was a uh, pre-placement. Always make whatever changes to a stamp first especially if you intend to place multiple of that stamp on the map. So edit the uh, settings of that first and then press click, 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 click. Because if you don't, uh, you're ending up just doing one stamp with those settings and you have to change it again. And believe me, that's annoying and you don't want to do that over and over again. I know I don't. Okay, so we'll keep doing this. We're going to add in another swell. Let's just put one. That's a little straight. I kind of prefer them to be a little bit more curved. There we go, that looks good. Put one here. And I'll just flip this one. I'll just ro flip and rotate this one like this, like that. All right, so <clears throat> place a couple of those swells. And then after you do that, go right over to your uh, catalog and type in snow right here in snow. I, I often use snow to create uh, turbulent water on my rivers, but it also works really well when trying to blend in uh, your wave because waves, uh, where the white is on a wave is where its crest is at. That's where the white part of a wave is at, the crest, and that's at the top or the crown, okay? And then uh, what I like to do is make the water, the white part, the crest part, fade into the rest of the, into the rest of the wave and so if you just kind of take this, this texture, this snow alpha texture, make sure that you set the opacity fairly low and full softness and just go along this ledge here like this and you're kind of creating uh, more of that ridge, more of the crest. And so I'm going in like this, let's bring down the size a little bit more so I have a little bit more fine tuning along this ledge here. And so you just kind of go in like this and kind of create more of the cresting of the wave by just going right against like this. And you can even kind of create little sections that go kind of out like this. So it kind of looks like it's rolling. And that's what waves do, they roll and crash. So I'm gonna make sure to kind of create some sections where it looks like it's rolling and crashing. And I know that it, unfortunately, uh, it kind of doesn't work well with the current texture that I used here on top. So that might be an error on my part. Maybe you want to use another one. Okay, so we got this here, got some nice wave here. Go, same thing, I'm gonna go in right here, like this. Do a second round and don't forget to make it curved. So it looks like there's some curves there. And then the next step to also is to add in a great stamp I like to use, it's called Mist. And I believe it's from Fantasy or Regional H2O. There's this kind of mist right here. And the mist is great because uh, there's something called Sea Mist. And Sea Mist can occur in multiple places if there's just a heavy wind that's ripping off uh, water from the top of the crest and you know you'll have this kind of sea mist if the wind is uh, if a wave is crashing up against an object then you're gonna find some mist sea mist there because it's creating sea mist from the friction of water breaking against rock or just the wind carrying off the mist or carrying off the water right off of the crest so you know if you have to don't 
feel like um, you don't have to, but I like to add a little bit of mist to the top of my crusts so that it kind of looks like there's a little bit of turbulent activity going on. And I'm also going to use that same texture as well to uh, line my edges like this. And just make sure you don't go off like that. Oopsie, don't do that. Unless, it, unless you want to show uh, the illusion of you know, the wind carrying off a crest so it would look like this. You have some going like that. If you wanted to, that could be missed as well. But I'm just going to go around these edges like this. Okay, there we go. Just to kind of further separate the difference between the underwater part and the top. <clears throat> okay, there we go. Let me just take a look at how it looks so far. Wow, I should have planned this out a little bit more, I think. <laughs> this doesn't, this is not my favorite underwater scene, but I hope that you're at least getting the general ideas, and I would absolutely encourage you to just try out your own things. But that's just kind of the general setup. Um, I'll make sure to go back and maybe change some more lighting in certain areas. Let's go back to this main light part down here. Now that we've done the top part, I'm gonna just add in a light source right on top like this to kind of create an overall aura that this light is giving off. So go to overlay, and I'm gonna bring the saturation quite, or I'm gonna bring the, the opacity down, and then just put that light source all over where the yellow lights are at so that it looks like some of that light is reflecting off of things like that. So let's take a step back and look at it. Yeah, that looks okay so far. A save. Yeah, not bad for two hours. Two hours. There are other things too, like if you want the light to travel uh, to the top of the surface, you can absolutely do that too. So I'll show you what I do to do that. Let's say that you want uh, some of this purple light to show up on the surface of the water. Just take one of those light stamps and just put them on top of the surface so it looks like the light is shining up. Now it's obviously many, many meters and many, many feet, so the light might not pierce that, but if you want to do it, you absolutely can, and it does look interesting. So if you take like one of these purple light sources and you put them just right above where this is, so think about where that is, go right up, boom, put it right there, and change the opacity like that. We'll bring it down even more. Copy, paste, let's put another one over here, and then another one over here like this. Okay, so that now you have, it looks like there's water. Looks like there's light from that reflecting up. And since we're doing that same thing, let's maybe just do that here too if you want some of that light source to pop up. So we'll add a couple over here as well. Just put in a bunch like this, like this. There we go. So it looks like there's light reflect coming up from the floor and going up. So that's kind of a nice idea. And then um, let's also put a boat in here. And I think a boat will make it, uh, will help as well to, to create like this is the top surface of the water, right? And it's hard to just to know that for sure without putting some more uh, Insinuation that it is the top. Okay, so if we type in like a ship Like this and we're probably gonna see uh, Some ships right here and um, the ship might be extremely small, so this is the part where scale comes in. Like how big is this ship in comparison to this? And so scale becomes a big deal. This size right here is, is pretty good to me. I think it's okay. And for dramatic effect, I like to like maybe tilt it a little bit to make it look like it's going up, up this very, very hard swell. And you can add in more boats or maybe some other ships if you want. Let's just say maybe there's Another one that's a little bit smaller that's following in behind as well. So you could put that one over here like this, or you can put it maybe up against here if you want to make it look like it's trying to dock up against the thing or just trying to break up that line work or the tower. So you can overlap it like this. Wouldn't put it in front, maybe like this if you wanted to. So this, maybe this ship's trying to get close to there, or you can move it along the edge so it looks like it's going up against another one like this going down like this. So it's up to you how you want to go about that. But placing stamps like ships and stuff on top of your water is really going to help to give it like a sense of like, ah, okay, uh, I can see that this is a tall wave right here because there's a boat being lifted up. 
And so adding in boats and other things, whatever you want, helps to kind of create like, ah, that's what that is. That's the surface of the water. It's always impor important to add some things on the top because it might not be clear what it is, right? You're going to be like, well, I don't know. Is this like, I guess this is underwater, but is this the top part? Well, it clearly is. There's a boat there, right? There's now there's no way that you're going to make the mistake of saying, ah, I don't know what that is. Of course, you know what it is because there's boats traveling along the water. And again, don't make them straight, kind of rotate them a little bit to make it look like they're dealing with kind of a rather turbulent and difficult kind of water as you would expect, right? Quickly save that and we'll do some last bits to it and then we'll call it good because we wanna do filters as well. Hey, George, hey, really glad that this information is helpful. And don't forget, this will be recorded. So if you just walked in, don't worry about that. Every Monday I do a Discord stream, I record it, and then Thursday of that same week, I post that same video on our YouTube channel so that that way, pow, 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 you don't miss all of it because you kind of want to watch it from beginning to end. And I also want to make an announcement that uh, I'm looking for people who uh, want to show their map process, like record their map process, and then, <clears throat> and then... Uh, send me the video and then I'll turn it into a time lapse and then it will go over kind of a screening process with the team and then maybe we can put it on our YouTube channel because there is a demand on our what, YouTube channel for shorter videos because streams, not everyone has a two hour frame in their day, uh, time frame in their day to watch a two hour stream. So I want to include more videos like time lapses and some shorter clips from uh, these videos so that people have a... a access to content that isn't going to take a huge chunk of their day and I know that people have kids school work you name it all the fun stuff in life we love so much uh, so <clears throat> I'll make sure to put that kind of content on the YouTube channel um, there are some steps that we can go to add more color and the way to go about doing that is very simple just add filters so we can go through some filter options if we want to I know originally we added some color filters in there like winter to kind of add in a sense of more blue to it. And you can also drop the uh, filter down a layer because everything's been flattened now. And so you can bring it down to where the light sources aren't affected if you wanted to. So if I bring it down to layer negative five, it's perfectly fine. The light sources are no longer influenced by the filter because the lights are on like layer three and the filter is on layer negative five. So that way you're not, uh, um, kind of um, blocking the light source. You know, you want to keep your light sources in, intact so it, it works a little better. So let's see here. What do we have? That night fil filter looks so intense. Well, this is a winter filter. We could try adding in a night filter too if you want. Uh, let's go ahead and go with night filter. Okay, so there's that one. Um, we can bring the opacity down quite a bit and bring it down a couple layers so that the light sources aren't affected. And we can also play around with uh, blend modes because some blend modes might work better than others. So we'll go through a couple blend mode options. Ooh, you know, I really like this color burn one. This really helps to kind of like bring out the, the light sources pop out more. Um, I really like that the darkness underneath and because you would expect it that the farther down you go, the darker it gets um, and you would expect it to be a bit brighter as you go up. That's just kind of what I would expect. And I'm going to also take a light source and I'm going to boost up the smaller one or the booster, the, the bigger one. And so that way we have a little bit more light on top of this tower. So let's go all the way up to 100%. I'm going to put that there and then put this light source here. And I just kind of want uh, the tower to pop out more. Hold on a second. Come on. You can do this. You can do it. There we go. And so we have some light there. And it's because I want this tower to not be too dark so that it kind of disappears into that water. So that looks nice. And then there's some other options that you can look into. Um, if you want, uh, you can add in a tilt shift. And tilt shift is basically a blur. And we can go about this in multiple ways. We can change where the how big the blur size is whether it's linear the position of it let's say that we want to bring the blur size down and let's say that we want maybe the blur to be uh higher 
higher up. And so it kind of blurs uh, more of the underground part. And that's okay. We're going to drop the, uh, the blur size and the opacity of the blur a little bit. So that way you can see it better. So let me check where our blur size is, our width. Let me bring it down a little bit more, a little bit more. Okay, we're gonna have to bring it down quite a bit because I don't want to hide uh, everything. I just kind of want to hide some of the lower parts with the blur. Let me go in, make sure that there is blur right here. Yeah. Hmm. Oh, you know what? We're gonna switch. We're gonna not do a linear. We're gonna go with a radial instead. Maybe a radial will work better. So give me a second to kind of look at that options. Go with blur size. Let's see where it is. So let's bring the blur size down a bit more. And let's position it a little bit farther down. Oopsie, am I using the wrong one? I think I am. One second. There we go. Okay. I don't want this to be blurred. This can be blurred a little bit. That's okay. Let me just take a look. I don't know, is blur okay with everybody or should we just remove blur altogether? I just wanted to showcase some of the tilt filter, the tilt shift filter. So I think blur looks okay to me. No blur, says George. Anyone else? Going once, going twice, three times. <laughs> All these people are responding. The blur makes sense. I think it looks cool. Panda says no blur. George says blur. Oh, it's tied up. Who's going to break it? Who's going to break it? It's two and two right now. Someone else put in your two cents to break it. <laughs> I put you on the spot. <laughs> no blur for Panda. Oh, we're still tied. Three and three. No blur. Oh, well, no blur. No blur now. It's leading the way. Okay, yeah, let's do without blur. Okay, we'll, we'll get without. So we'll remove it. So I'm just going to delete this. We don't need it. <clears throat> I'm fine without. And it's okay. We can add blur or we can just put it on there and then just turn it off for the future. But I think this is it. I think this works for me. The one of the filter I recommend is always adding clarity because clarity will help things kind of pop out a little bit more. And so I've got this nice clarity filter on here. Let me turn it off so you can see the difference. Do you see the difference? The water becomes more blue. Uh, the stamps become a little bit more crisp. Let me go back. See the difference? More blur, it looks a little different. Add that in, crisp, helps the colors pop out. Clarity is always a must. I always do that. Um, <clears throat> yeah, for this map, a blur would probably work good, but obviously for battle maps, blurs might not work. It just depends on the map that you're making. I, I can tell you right now about a uh, tilt shift that you, you should think first about the map you're gonna make before you apply the tilt shift. Like you can't just go through your catalog of maps, you know, go through a couple of your maps and say, I'm gonna add a tilt shift filter to this. Seriously, that does not work. You have to think first, plan out what kind of map you wanna make and then apply the, the tilt shift because the tilt shift really only works for certain kinds of maps, unfortunately. I, that's just my, what I have noticed when working with that tool or working with that filter. But I think this is going to be it. I think this looks pretty good. Uh, there's, I guess there's some other filters that you could apply like old paper, which adds some texture. And I can just show that real quick and then I'm gonna be done, okay? I'm gonna quickly show the old paper. Yeah, well, yeah, it's okay if you don't use it. It's all a matter of personal preference. Uh, I have noticed that scenes generally work better. There's a couple battle maps that I've made where there's like a portal in the center and it's like twisting and warping time. And so it's like time is different in the center. And so I used a radial blur. And so everything around the circular part of that uh, filter was blurred out because I was trying to create a effect of like time change. So, you know, using the filter to your, using that filter to your advantage with pre-planning is, is the way to go about it. Again, don't, don't do it on random maps. It doesn't really work that well. I'm gonna add one more filter, which is one that I like to use, which is texture filters, and it's called old paper. And I like to use that one quite a bit. Uh, it's in parchment world. And if you don't see parchment world in your options, if you select search all styles, all of them will become available to you. So just know that um, because this particular uh, texture, this, this filter is not 
a pre a default for this style you'll have to change it so overlay is the one I like to use and I'm gonna drop it way down so I don't want any of the artifacts to be affecting any of the light sources I'm just gonna put it on overlay real quick all the way to 100% just to see how it looks like what it looks like and I'm not really satisfied with that I'm gonna go to repeat too instead and I'm gonna bring down probably the size and I'm gonna bring down the opacity and what I'm trying to do is just kind of create a, some extra texture that gets built into it. And it's absolutely not a requirement, but I like to add it in there for fun because it kind of looks nice. And then there's one other filter you could probably add in this particular scene. And that would probably be the vignette. And I would do it at full 100%. It might not actually hit the edges. I don't know. Looks like it does a little bit there. A little bit here and that looks okay to me I don't know if I really like the um, I don't think I really like that yeah I don't like that so we'll just remove that I think that's it that is it I'm gonna go ahead and turn my record off thank you guys so much for watching I'll ask some do some Q&A here in just a second I'm just gonna save this and turn off OBS so I'm no longer recording stop